Hi, my name's Peter Kaufman. Do you remember when you first saw the iPhone? I remember thinking, oh my God, this changes absolutely everything. This is going to have such a huge impact. There were a lot of people like, everybody's gonna be sucked into their phone all the time. A and they were right, like we all are. But Apple's asking us a question. What if your eyes were the screens? <laughs> So recently, I've been seeing a lot of tech YouTubers reviewing the Apple Vision Pro, and I've seen literally no other people talking about the Apple Vision Pro. When the Apple Vision Pro was announced, I initially kind of said, hey, look, custom reality and you, that book I wrote, they're trying to literally mediate between you and the rest of the world. They're customizing the world for you in a way that you feel that you're doing for yourself, but really they're doing for you, and that's kind of scary. But I also saw that at a $3,500 price point, I was kind of like, uh, for that? I saw this tweet from a guy named Brad Lynch. It's still crazy to me how every screen recording I do in Vision Pro looks like one of those fake AR concepts that have plagued XR over the years. I don't know what XR is. Extreme reality? What? 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 But no, this is a device I can use daily. I really don't think I can go back to anything else for productivity after this. Why wait to die to go to hell? Just fork over 3,500 bucks and you can go whenever you want. And something I wanna talk about that I think the Vision Pro just absolutely, completely ignores is society. Yes, I realize how silly that sentence sounds. And I'm not talking about like, will society accept this? I'm talking about social norms and interactions. So this, when I do this, that's a social cue. It tells everybody around me something about me. And not an intrinsic trait or anything like that, but something about my current state, my status, what you're going to get if you try to interact with me. It's also helped normalize passive communication. Uh, the less important conversations that we have, we don't need to have on a phone call that requires all of our attention anymore. A lot of it can be done over text messages. There is Nothing passive about an expensive plunger with screens in it attached to your face. Yes, you can absolutely get absorbed into a smartphone and that can feel like maybe that person is taking a little bit too much attention away from the real world, but it's an ongoing choice you're making every second that you're holding the phone up because at any second you can take it down. That doesn't happen here. Once you choose to put the damn thing on, the damn thing's on. Where the phone can be a major distraction in your real life, real life is a major distraction to your Apple Vision Pro. And yes, I understand that there are some people that like that. Uh, I think most people actually don't. It's a dichotomy I want to label as integration versus intrusion. Like, think about that goofy AI pin that Humane came out with recently. It has a kind of a similar idea actually to the Apple Vision Pro. It wants to replace your smartphone with something that just exists in the in space, I guess. It, I actually heard about this device from this interview that circulated with these news hosts that asked some very softball logical questions and they just don't have answers to it. But I gotta go like this when I'm in the meeting and anybody who can see my hand can see the see what I'm reading too. How, I mean, I don't know how that's yeah. different sure. than what the screen's doing. Yeah, I think very it's similar to a phone in that way. And we also have though a personic, we call a personic speaker. Yeah. Why is that better than the, the watch that, that Apple has out at this point? Yeah, so I think the biggest thing here that is, is that it's AI powered. That looks and feels intrusive. And other than for like people who don't interact with other people, I can't imagine the Apple Vision Pro not being intrusive in exactly the same ways. And then there's what I alluded to at the very beginning of this. Um, the iPhone was this massively societally transforming device. It immediately had an impact that we all saw and all knew where things were going. We all thought, wow, that is going to take over our lives. When I see this, I don't see that. The iPhone or smartphone, because it did kind of create or popularize that genre of phone, but that it created a situation that was completely different than the situation before. In your pocket and hand was a thing that was doing things you could never do before. 
I don't see that with this. I see an intrusive device that doesn't really do anything new. The coolest thing it does is all of the screen extensions, and that's something to me that would just be tethered to my computer. A VR helmet would do that just fine, and I can get one of those for like 300 bucks, and I don't even think it's worth it for 300 bucks. I can get another like 24 inch monitor for like 160 bucks. I have two monitors. I don't feel like I need more, if I'm honest. And then if you want to talk about the fact that those screens are eventually going to be covered in ads should the device become adopted, uh, I don't like that. Honestly, with a phone in my pocket, it seems like companies know way too much about me now. Hey, let's fork over tons of biometric information to them at all times as well. Sounds good. Again, if we're talking about that dichotomy of integration versus intrusion, think about what advertising could be when your eyeballs are the screens. I don't need advertisement projected directly into my eyes to the point where it sits in between me and the wall. I, I don't need that. This device doesn't really do anything that feels groundbreaking or necessary or society shaking. Like a bunch of people are gonna call this thing dystopian and question its nefariousness. And I agree with most of the points those people are going to make, but it looks useless. And I'm not somebody who's like a technophobe. I'm like all in on AI. I love artificial intelligence. I love the march of technology. It is the embodiment of human progress. I just, I have concerns about this particular piece of technology uh, in its usefulness, in its intrusiveness, and ultimately both of those things tie in to capitalism. Because in terms of usefulness, on one end of that, this really feels like them trying to drive demand with marketing for a supply of shit that they've already made. Like there's 200,000 pre-orders of this thing. Think about that versus how the iPhone sold. They've definitely manufactured more than 200,000 of these things, and they intend to manufacture way more than that. However, that lifestyle, identity, fandom, early adopter, Apple supporter, only 200,000 of those people have plopped down 3,500 bucks for one of these things. Now you could say I, I, that's kind of a, an indictment of where we are uh, economically, and I wouldn't argue with you, but I do think that there's more than 200,000 people with disposable income who love Apple. This isn't a holy shit product, it's a wait and see product. And that means by the standard of the iPhone, it's a failure iPhone wasn't wait and see. iPhone was holy shit. iPhone, and because of it, smartphones saw rapid adoption in the following years. People are barely even talking about this outside of like people who most likely get free ones to review at this point. Or I don't know, maybe are they participating in a beta test or something? I don't, I don't really know. In terms of usefulness, I, I don't see the demand. And in terms of capitalism, this lifestyle marketing situation we all live in now, I don't even see the demand there. Like what I see when I look at the Apple Vision Pro is Nintendo's Virtual Boy. Virtual Boy was this alleged virtual gaming console, which did not strap to your head. In fact, it had a stand and you had to put your head up to it, which was already a big problem. But a bigger problem is that there wasn't really any reason for it to exist. Virtual Boy Wario Land, yes, had a 3D component. It actually projected two versions of the image into each of your eyes, so there was a 3D planar effect. But why? It was all red because the display was not capable of doing anything other than that. It wasn't portable in the way the Game Boy was, so that limitation wasn't necessarily as excusable as it would be for, say, the Game Boy. And in truth, it didn't offer anything other than a really uncomfortable way to play what should be a portable game and isn't. It's, it's purposeless. Like, I would rather play all of those games in full color on a TV or on a handheld device in fact, you can actually see a bunch of projects where people have put together their own single screen portable virtual boys 
And that almost seems worth playing those games on. And this thing was an abject failure. It uh, bombed so hard. And you could probably easily figure out why. You know, the problems that it had are not that dissimilar from the problems I think the Vision Pro has. It was unimpressive, bulky, and antisocial. I don't see how the Vision Pro isn't all of those same problems, especially for what it's trying to do. It's lofty, it's ambitious, but why? Who cares? I've talked to enough people that I don't think I'm crazy saying this, but I am also interested in your opinion. Leave a comment. I don't think I have anything else to say about this now. I'm sure I will eventually, but in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, maybe become a patron. Thanks for your time. Hope you have a good day.